owners know that one of the best feelings in the world is that crazy, happy, welcome home greeting they get from their pet. But what made dogs become so uber friendly to their owners? Some scientists say it's all about the genetics. They say there are genes that boost hyper sociability and they found it in dogs. So this doesn't happen with wolves. They've looked at this, scientists have looked at, even if a wolf is raised by humans, it's just not the same. They don't have that, you know, that affable nature. They aren't as, you know, uh, sure. affectionate in that way. So they went through and they started doing this research. A Princeton scientist kind of headed this up. She found 48,000 mutations, be gene mutations between dogs and wolves. So then they went a little bit farther and they said, okay, we're actually going to take a look at wolves and dogs raised side by side by humans. And then they took uh, even more testing, and we're talking about genetics here, and they found a segment of 28 genes that were different in dogs than their wolf cousins. So the genes, it's apparently known as Williams syndrome, which apparently causes overwhelming friendliness and happiness, and you find it in dogs, but not any other animal alley. Yeah, you also find it in humans, which I mm. thought was interesting too, and some of the characteristics of humans that have Williams syndrome are an interest in music, the other one is an aversion to physical contact, which I thought was interesting because dogs are so friendly and lovable, oh, yeah. and then being overly friendly, and then sensitivity to loud noises, which dogs are definitely we had a story noises. about a young man uh, in Maple Grove uh, here on CCO that has uh, Williams syndrome, and it's fascinating. The, the way they did this research is really, really interesting, right? Because you think about all the animals out there, and none exhibit this crazy friendliness. With all due respect to you, cat owners out there, like you still don't exactly. You can see still love the cat, and they just you can love the cat. It's, you, it's not the same. No, it's not and the Kylie, same. And Kylie, they really found that in a way, this is a survival mechanism. Yes, right? because you think about dogs; they're not really great hunters. Maybe they would be had they kind of stayed in the wild, but I don't think so. And they talked about this because they said that actually being so close to humans mm. has allowed them to survive as a species and that as a breed. Sense, because I wouldn't see a dog surviving in a pack of wolves. No. no it's it's just Certainly not like a Karen Terrier toy poodle uh, no, combo. No, definitely not. Not going to see no. that animal surviving. <laughs> it is amazing, like, just the fact that you can isolate the genetics down yes. that way and find that mutation and say, like, it does kind of make sense. Can you find a gene that has to do with this kind of sociability? Well, and I think we don't associate genes with personality, mm -hmm. where this is part of a personality when you're looking at a sure, dog. Sure, sure. And the fact that we see this syndrome in humans. Yes. And then and you some see of the it same in characteristics. Similar in dogs. Interesting. Just love up those doggies, that's all. That it's, is keeping them, it's keeping them, what did they call it? Survival of the... Friendliest, survival uh -huh. of the friendliest. I think we could all take a little yes, something from that Yes, let that, that be too. the lesson for people today. Right? You know, 